community and I just realized that I hadn't read depictions of people who are in the traveler community really outside of perhaps Esmeralda from the hunchback of Notre Dame you know in, in, on on the um on the film and and I realized that I had this really narrow vision of them and um, the traveller community, the Romani traveller community actually originate in northern India, which is where my own family are from. And so it felt like there was this link. I'm so sorry. I am, it might be my fault, but I hope it isn't. But I was telling you about Kizzy and Lil. Oh, hi, Anna. Oh, hi. It's like losing each other in a bar. <laughs> well, let's pretend it's like real life. It's like real life. Um, so, um, so Kizzy and Lil, they're members of a traveller community and there was this really neat arch between the traveller community and um, the original story of Dracula because Dracula is based on Vlad the Impaler and Vlad the Impaler had hundreds um, of slaves, he had tens of thousands of Romani slaves in particular. So um, Vlad the Impaler was the original inspiration for Dracula, it's where his name came from um because he was known as dracul which means dragon um so you know it was um it just felt like this really natural unforced way to ensure that i was creating a diverse story a story where difference was a necessity rather than you know something that i was sort of making vague gestures at it became an intrinsic part of, of the story and so um, Kizzy and Lil are 17 when the story starts and they get enslaved they get captured from their their traveler life and enslaved in um, a boyer a lord's castle and eventually one of them catches the eye of Dracul and it sort of spirals out from there I do want to kind of I always feel apologetic about the fact it's not vampires as you might expect it it's very much an origin story it's very much more emphasis is put on these pe these characters as people rather than um them as sort of these fantastical i was more interested in digging down into what made them human before they became inhumane mm -hmm. um so i just got distracted by getting notifications on my phone saying that katie is texting me but i know she's also watching but i'm hoping you're not telling me <laughs> Just going awry. I can't read your text messages, right? <laughs> you can see everything. Um, how easy was it to find out accurate or accurate-ish information about the traveler community at the time? Because it's medieval, right? So how like is, yeah. is there much about the travel community from that time? So yes, uh, the so it's set in sort of the mid fourteen hundreds, which is when Vlad the Impaler was at the height of his rule in Romania. And um, he used to go into the forests and sort of clear. So the stories we have aren't from travellers' perspectives. They're from outside communities' perspectives, which obviously isn't an ideal like way to, to work your way into a story because it's so important to have those voices. But they just don't exist, you know. There wasn't a culture of, of writing things down. It was more an oral culture. So unfortunately, what we have is a reflection of these people. But um, I really tried to drill down into what makes us all human and imagine what it must be like to really have um, that freedom, um, especially as a woman at that time, there was particular credence given to women because they tended to be the healers. I was a poet first and it was really, you know, I'm used to working with a structure. I'm used to working within confines and for that to be a liberating thing so I think that was quite helpful and really helpful in retellings um, in particular because I wanted to respect the original text I really love came to love Dracula um, and I didn't want to undo any of the work that he'd done and I go further in that in the Waterstones edition there's an extra chapter that chronicles Jonathan Harker's visit to the castle from the view of the Brides of Dracula and it was so much fun to write because there is enough there in my characters and in Bram Stoker's characters to kind of meet in the middle. And I feel like they mesh really well. Yeah. And speaking of sort of different differences in the way that you approach writing or not, um, obviously, like you mentioned at the start, this is your first YA, but you've written uh, middle grade. And you also, of course, have had your debut adult novel come out uh, earlier this year. Uh, what, I guess what makes a book YA for you and did you approach writing it differently? I, it's a very different skill. Um, I think 
ultimately it's all writing and I'm very loath to kind of genreify things because I think it it limits readers but it is a different skill you are writing from a different place for me this is possibly the most emotionally connected of my books I think when you're at that point in your life when you're sort of you're at that cusp of, of womanhood at that cusp of, of really starting to think you know who am I where is my life going to lead and I mean I'm 30 now and I still don't quite know but when I was 17 <laughs> I thought I knew <laughs> who I was and and it's sort of the way that the world grows so exponentially you know lots of us go to university or get jobs around that time and and it's just how expansive the world becomes and it's sort of it's so scary and so liberating and you'll be having your first sexual experiences. You'll be getting drunk for the first time and all these things, they're so heady and so, you're so in your body and, and in those moments. And it was really exciting to, um, to really get into that, that headspace mm -hmm. and um, really think about, you know, what makes, what makes teen, being a teenager so unique you know, and I think so much of it is that first time of everything. And also the earnestness, the kind of open heartedness that you approach everything with. Like a lot of the times the mistakes that the characters make in this book is because they're so open hearted and they trust. Um, so there's Oti Mabuse again. See, she's having the same issues. Um, so, yeah, it's it's it was a really liberating, difficult thing to do. Um but writing for all ages is, it's just different each time. People are really going for it, it's lovely. It'd be great if the government properly funded the NHS though, wouldn't it? Hear, hear, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, can you hear the cowbell? Oh my God, I actually can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's a firework shot off. A firework? Don't yeah, don't do firework. fireworks. The emergency services don't need to deal with your firework related oh, injuries. <laughs> that's a good point. I, I, yay to the sentiment, Pat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, right. So that was a nice, um, a nice little pause. I mean, we've had a few pauses in this, but that I've was the best pauses. so far. Um, yes. I have to ask you this question. I did check with Kieran. It was okay to ask this one in advance when it came in. <laughs> but one of the questions we had in, we had in advance was, um, you seem to gad about a lot. Uh, what's your routine when you're writing? And as someone who gads about Whatever gives you time, this you idea. <laughs> um, I have earned my gadding about, can I just say? <laughs> <laughs> um but I do that I I really I'm a social person I think it's really important to be a person when you're a writer as well and to not let that be your whole identity because it's quite soul destroying at points and I think you've got to have stuff outside it but my routine really varies depending on whether um I'm working I'm in the grip of a novel or not so I um mm -hmm. d tend to have these fallow periods where I'm just sort of reading a lot I'm thinking having thoughts I'm um I'm basically refilling the tank and then when I'm on deadline I really respond well to pressure so mm -hmm. I will when I'm consumed by a project I will just sit and work on it so i I'm editing at the moment, so I'm trying to be strict with myself. Obviously, it's weird times, but if it was normal times, I would be working every day a set number of pages. I do a set number of words um, every day. And so I'm quite disciplined when I've got that deadline approaching, but I do really value those times when I'm just absorbing art and and seeing my friends and gadding about. <laughs> um those are really important things to me as a person as well as as a writer so um I think maybe uh the time has come to admit defeat and get that biryani uh in, in the, the oven, oven. Uh, yeah so uh but Kieran has got all the questions you asked her in advance although we've actually looking down we have covered quite a lot of them Good. already Good. um and I will send Kieran the ones that were sent over on the Wardstones account. Uh, so Kieran, do look on Kieran's Instagram tomorrow. 
yeah I'll, maybe I'll for... just spend the morning like going through anything we didn't cover um you can always just ask me over on twitter or anything um, i'm sorry yeah. that this has been plagued with difficulty <laughs> um, but so much for everyone who's watched and thank you for people who've kept joining in because we have somehow managed to maintain a fairly constant level of people yeah. watching so thank you for bearing with impressed. instagram and coming uh back in yeah uh deathless girls paperback is out today um and congrats kieran and um, thanks my love and yeah. congrats for your Great paperback fun. too thank you uh stay safe everyone uh and look out for more uh chats on uh waterstones live hopefully with uh less of us all being chucked out soon <laughs> bye, bye.